welcome to the show. Today, we are taking a look at some of the latest trends, including some classic ones that are making a bit of a comeback. We are obviously, though, starting off in the kitchen. And when it comes to food, one trend that keeps popping up everywhere you look is smashed things. You see smashed potatoes, smashed burgers, smashed tacos. So today, I wanted to make my version of a smashed shrimp dumpling, which honestly, I know. I'm very excited about it. Listen, if you put a shrimp in anything, I'm gonna eat it. I love a shrimp. They're like probably my favorite food in the world. So to get started on this, we are actually using a food processor, which sounds kind of strange, but basically we wanna mince up some of the shrimp to make it stick all the other shrimp together, and then we're gonna smoosh it under a little dumpling wrapper, and it's gonna be delicious. It makes no sense, but it works. So trust, trust the process. So in my food processor, I wanna add about 200 grams of shrimp. I have, in total, 400 grams of a deveined raw shrimp that I just thawed in a strainer under cold water. My first tip anytime you are working with raw shrimp, especially if it's frozen, defrost it in cold water, not hot. My cousin Lindsay did hot water one time, weird half-cooked shrimp, not great. Definitely not good. Cold water will thaw it out perfectly, so you're good to go. So I'm gonna add half of those shrimp into my food processor, and I've already chopped a few up a little bit just to kind of get the mixture going. Now I'm gonna add the rest of the shrimp into a bowl, and we're gonna go back to those later. Honestly, chopped shrimp, not the cutest thing in the world, but boy, oh geez, are they delicious. All right, now into that food processor, I'm gonna start adding in my flavorings because I want the flavor to be in that finely chopped mixture so it gets throughout every single bite of those dumplings. So into there, I'm gonna add in three chopped green onions, popping those in, white and green parts, as well as two cloves of garlic that I've minced up, add that in. And then finally, about a tablespoon or two of minced up ginger, and if you know me, I got this ginger from the freezer, grated it up, good to go. So just add that in, and that ginger is gonna give so much brightness and deliciousness. Now I hear some of you saying, Mary, you're putting all this into a food processor, which chops things for me, so why did I pre-chop all of this stuff? And the answer to that, my friends, is friction. Friction creates heat, and as those blades turn around, they produce a bit of heat, and like with thawing shrimp with cold water, you don't want these babies to get hot. So by pre-chopping everything, it's gonna mix up a lot quicker, which is perfect. Now I do wanna season that, I know, right? Didn't, didn't think these dumplings would be science dumplings, did you? But that's what cooking is, science you can eat. All right, I'm gonna season that up with a little bit of salt and then a little bit of pepper. If you wanted to here, you could throw in some chilies, something a little bit spicy, but we're keeping it bright and fresh today. Now I'm gonna pop the lid onto this food processor and just process this until it's finely minced up. I am gonna kind of pulse it though, because again, if you pulse it, it makes it so there's less friction happening. Again, I told you it's not gonna be cute. This is not cute. But basically you want it to come together so it's kind of starting to climb up the sides of that food processor. So that is looking perfect. It's nice and finely minced up. So I'm just gonna transfer all that shrimp mixture into this bowl with the other 200 grams of those chopped shrimp. I've chopped them up just so they stay nice. You're gonna get a, like a big bite of meaty, delicious shrimp, as well as this beautiful kind of fresh, gingery, garlicky, green onion situation. So that's looking beautiful. And by beautiful, I mean not. But again, <laughs> it's gonna work out. All right, now I wanna add even more flavor into here. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of fat. And for that fat, I'm gonna toss in a little bit of sesame oil. Just about two teaspoons is gonna give you a nice toasty nuttiness right on in. And again, shrimp aren't the most fatty things in the world, so it gives a little bit more moisture into here. Then to bind everything together, I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of cornstarch. That's gonna help with the binding and as well with a little bit of like crispiness, which is always a good thing. So two teaspoons of that cornstarch goes in. If you have like tapioca starch or something, that would work as well. And then strangely, I'm also adding in about a half a teaspoon of sugar. Anytime I'm poaching shrimp for like a shrimp boil or a shrimp cocktail, I always add a little bit of sugar to the water because it just sweetens things up, but it doesn't taste desserty. So it's gonna be delish. So add that on in, give that a mix up. And this is smelling so, can you smell the ginger over there? I know, I'm very excited. Honestly, if I was doing this at home, I'd probably double the amount of ginger, but <laughs> you do you. 
And again, as soon as you mix in that sesame oil, it smells toasty. It almost smells kind of like a toasted bagel. It's really, really good. Now, I do want to add one more binder into here. And for that, I'm going to use an egg white, not the egg yolk. I just want the white to kind of like bring everything together. So I've got that egg white here, and I do want to kind of beat it up a little bit. Right now, when you crack an egg white, it's kind of gloopy. You know what I mean? So you do want to just do this until it's nice and foamy, because basically as you're doing this, you're kind of breaking up the albumin, making it a little bit thinner and a little more liquidy. So it's gonna mix more evenly throughout that shrimp mixture. Now we're not making meringue. You don't need to like worry. I'm not making you make a meringue and shrimp dumplings. That would be wild. But see how it's kind of thinner now? It's not as gloopy. So I'm gonna add that on into that shrimp mixture. Pop that to the side and then give this a mix together. That's all gonna hold everything together, but it is a little loose right now. So once that's combined, I do wanna pop this into my fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes, just to firm up. That's gonna allow all the proteins in that shrimp to kind of come together. It's gonna be totally delish. And we get double the shrimp, which is always good because we got a swap here. So this is what the mixture looks like after. It kind of firms up, it holds its shape really nicely, and it's a total dream. So I've got a pan here over about medium, medium high heat. And into there, I'm gonna add in a little bit of neutral oil. Because while I love a steamed dumpling, I also love that crispy fry. And the glory of these smashed shrimp dumplings is that you get a little bit of that golden brown fry action, but then we're also gonna kind of steam them at the same time. So best of both worlds. So I'm gonna take some of this shrimp mixture, give it a little bit of a scoop and add about, I don't know, one to two tablespoons worth in little kind of mounds. And right now you're like, Mary, these are just weird little shrimp meatballs. And honestly, <laughs> if you just fried those like that, I would eat that on a bowl of rice or anything. It'd be a delicious little appetizer, actually. You heard it here first, appetizer. So I'm gonna do about four. And here comes the smash portion. So I have got some wonton wrappers here. You can use wonton wrappers, any sort of dumpling wrapper that you can buy. If you wanna make them yourself, go for it. But basically you grab one of these, pop it on top like a little hat. Already so cute. It kinda looks like something fancy from a Michelin star restaurant, but it's not. <laughs> it's just a weird shrimp with a little hat on it. Then we get to get to smashing. So grab your spatula and just press that baby down. That's gonna give you contact with the pan. It's gonna give you golden brown. It's gonna be totally delicious. Those little shrimp are gonna stick onto that wonton wrapper. Now I'd wanna cook those for about a minute on this side, just like this to get that golden brown color because shrimp cook really quickly. Once that minute's up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of water and then you wanna cover this. This is where we get to steaming. So I don't have a lid that fits this pan, but to be honest, anything can be a lid if it covers it. <laughs> so add about a tablespoon in, careful of that oil splattering. Pop a lid on and let that go for another minute. That's gonna steam that wrapper. It's gonna get soft and delicious. The underside's gonna be golden brown and shrimpy, and I'm very excited about that. So they've been cooking for about a minute, and you'll see that they look kinda like a dumpling. You know what I mean? They look so good. That delicious wonton has steamed up, so it's nice and tender now. Now, I am gonna set these aside, and guess what? Another good thing about not using a lid and using a pan, it now is a plate for now. <laughs> so we're saving on dishes, which is always good. You've got that golden brown shrimp. You're gonna have to believe me because I'm gonna plate these up in a minute, but they are so good. That shrimp cooks so quickly. And if you wanted to, you could even do this with ground chicken. You could do it with ground turkey. Ground pork would be delicious. And mix up the same things. You wouldn't have to put it in the food processor. Just mix it up, pop it in that pan, smash it down with some wontons, and you are good to go. Now I'm gonna take the, oh, that's warm. Mary Bird, put your oven mitt on. <laughs> Guys, don't worry, I'm a professional. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna pop these over here just to stay there while I whip up a really quick slaw, because I like a, like a little bit of a topper, like a savory little sprinkle on those babies. So I've got about four cups of shredded Napa cabbage here. Now, Napa cabbage is um, like a beach ball as opposed to like a green cabbage, which is more like a basketball. If you know your cabbages, that makes sense. It's a little squishier, it's not as firm, it's not as hearty, but it's really, really nice because it breaks down quickly. If you didn't want to use Napa, you could use any sort of like Chinese cabbage or bok choy or anything like that. Just shred it up in a bowl. For a little bit of sweetness, I'm tossing in a shredded carrot because I love that bright color. And again, that sweetness is great. Now to mimic the flavor going on on the inside, I've got a couple of green onions thinly sliced up. Those are going in. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a toss. 
And again, this is what makes it into a meal as opposed to a little snack. It gives you like a salad vibe, which is always good. Now I am making this into a slaw, so I am gonna put on a little bit of mayonnaise because I love mayonnaise. If you have like Japanese mayo, feel free to use that. Just like two, maybe four tablespoons, just until it's a little bit creamy. We are gonna flavor this up a little bit more with some extra stuff, but I do wanna start this off with that mayo just to give you that creamy vibe, that kind of classic situation. All right, that's looking beautiful. Again, that Napa cabbage immediately starts to kind of break down and get a little bit more dense. It's really, really good. Now I do want a little bit of a dip for these dumplings. So in my little measuring cup, I'm gonna mix together half a cup of soy sauce. You can use low sodium, regular sodium, whatever you'd like. And to be honest, since this is gonna take a while, I might do a half recipe. I think we're gonna do a quarter cup, and we're still not there. Quarter cup, we did it, okay, perfect. <laughs> quarter cup of that soy sauce. And then into there as well, I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of rice wine vinegar. That's gonna give you a nice brightness. That's the thing I love about dumplings, is you get that bright vinegariness, that saltiness, it's totally delish. Now I want a tablespoon of that toasted sesame oil as well for a little bit of nuttiness. That is gonna float on top, but it's gonna be perfect. And then finally, about a tablespoon of some sriracha. Any sort of chili sauce would do. You just want a little bit of heat in there. Give that a whisk together, and that, is going to be a totally delicious little dip. Now, I do wanna carry over some of this flavor, so I am gonna add a splash of this into the slaw, just to give it a bit of flavor. The rest of it, gonna pop it into a serving bowl for Dunkin', which is always a delight. Toss that slaw up, and now it's time for the grand reveal of these little babies. Okay, so we get those dumplings, and we flip them over. See that little golden brownness? So you're getting that crispy, golden brown kind of shrimp situation. That little bit of cornstarch in there gave you a bit more crunch, which is a total dream. And um, I don't know why I wrote this recipe so small, because personally, that's a Mary Berg size portion right there. <laughs> Add a little bit of that slaw right on top, again, like a little savory sprinkle. It's gonna be a total dream. You put this out at your next party, what a delight. You make like a giant one. Honestly, this is a little bit of a riff on a shrimp burger I do, so I just fry it up like a burger and stick it on a bun. It's a total dream. And then you wanna garnish it, obviously, with some more savory sprinkles. And for that, I love a little bit of sesame action right on top. Okay, now I'm gonna dig in, because I cannot wait. You cannot hold me back from shrimp for too long. Let's give it a go. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. That is flavor city. Mm. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.